But it was clear that Kachu Rinpoche wanted to get to know him. Yeah? Uh, and, and he went way out of his way to connect with Bhante. <coughs> and then he was extremely devoted to the, the figure above his head, Jamyang Kensi Rinpoche. But uh, Bhante said that from two or three experiences, he realized that Kachi Rinpoche could pick other, up on other people's minds directly. There are several stories, I'll just tell you one. Yeah. He said that uh, uh, once um, two American uh, uh, people who were writing a book about spiritual life came to visit him. And they wanted to meet with Kachu Rinpoche and they asked Bante to come with them and translate. So they had a meeting. The American would ask a question. And they translated into Nepali, I think. Yeah. Then Kachi Rinpoche would reply. And they translated into English. And so it goes on like that. Yeah. And after some time, uh, the conversation got very deep indeed. Yeah? And he, Bhante realized that Kachu Rinpoche was replying to the question before it had been translated. He didn't know a word of English. He could just pick up what the question was. Yeah? So after a while, he was not having to translate the American, he was just having to translate the Kachu Rinpoche for the American. And he seems to have had several other sort of abilities of this kind, yeah? <laughs> These, of course, from, from a Buddhist point of view, are not necessarily transcendental. Mm. Uh, but, uh, you know, in the case of somebody like Kachi Rinpoche, they definitely go with very deep Dhammic experience. Yeah? <laughs> Chetra Sangha Dorje also had this characteristic, yeah? Uh, he went to visit Bhante once when he was living in uh, rented accommodation. <coughs> and he said to Bhante, next year you will have your own property. At that time, there was absolutely no possibility. Bhante had hardly any money at all. But he, he not only predicted that he'd have a monastery of his own, he gave it a name. Well, even the possibility of it didn't exist. And literally within seven months, Bhante had a new Vihara. Uh, so some of these, these gurus, they spend a lot of time in meditation and they could pick things up very directly. <coughs> But Kachi Rinpoche, yes, the, the main thing Bhante always speaks about is his extraordinary friendliness. 
जो काचू इम्पो जी की जो बात की जिसके विषय में मंत्री विशेष रूप से जिक्र करते हैं कि उनका असामान्य ऐसा मैत्रीपूर्ण और उनका जो प्रत्यक्ष रूप से लोगों के साथ व्यवहार करें तो हिस लेफ्ट इस धारुरुचि और उनके बाई और जो भी वो धारुरुचि और वो ऐसे गुरु हैं कि जिनसे बंदे की बहुत ज़्यादा पहचान हुई है जो हुआ। It took Bante much more time to get to know him. He was more reserved. लेकिन उन्हें जानने के लिए बंदे को बहुत समय लग गया क्योंकि वो बहुत कम बातचीत करते हैं। He had to leave Tibet because of the the Chinese pressure. और चीनी दबाव के चलते उन्हें तिब्बत छोड़ना पड़ा था। And he was appointed by the Dalai Lama as the the abbot. Of the the Gelu Monastery in Bodh Gaya. और बोध गया में जो Gelu मठ है, उसके प्रमुख के रूप में दलाई लामा ने उन्हें वहाँ पर नियुक्त किया। If you if you go to Bodh Gaya and you're coming out of the 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 plaza outside the temple, straight ahead of you is the Mahabodhi Society headquarters. तो अगर आप बोध गया जाते हैं और Right next to it, on the right, there's a Tibetan monastery. और उसी के बगल में उसके दाईं और एक तिब्बती मंदिर है. So Dadurumche was the abbot of that. और Dadurumche उस मंदिर के प्रमुख. One day he was looking out the window of his his rooms. And he saw something strange. और एक दिन वो अपने कमरे की खिड़की से बाहर देख रहे थे और उन्हें एक विचित्र बात दिखाई दी। His 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 rooms looked out onto the courtyard of the Mahabodhi Society headquarters. Yeah. तो Mahabodhi Mahabodhi यार का जो प्रमुख केंद्र था उसका जो आंगन था वहाँ का दृश्य दिखाई देता था उनकी खिड़की से। He saw a yellow robed figure. तो उन्होंने देखा कि एक व्यक्ति पीले रंग का चिवट पहने हुए That wasn't unusual. और वो कोई असामान्य बात नहीं थी किसी का पीले रंग का। He saw it was a westerner. लेकिन उन्होंने ये देखा कि एक पश्चिम पश्चिमात्य व्यक्ति है। This must be 1950-1951 something like that. और ये 1950 से एक कावल की बात है। And he turned to his attendant and said, Look, the Dhamma has come even to the west. और उन्होंने अपने साहेब की ओर देखा और उन्होंने कहा कि देखो so that was his first experience of Bhante. And of course, Tibetans have various prophecies that the Dhamma will go to the West. Before they even knew what the West was. So they were all very, very impressed that a Westerner is coming to the Dhamma. Anyway, Bhante had been working alongside the Mahabodhi Society, although not in the Mahabodhi Society. Because it was dominated by a Brahmin president. Uh, the, 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 uh, the man who chiefly opposed Baba Sahib in the Hindu code bill. When Bhante first met Baba Sahib, Baba, Baba Sahib challenged him, why uh, does your uh, Mahabodhi society have a, a Bengali Brahmin as so Bhante said, it's not my Mahabodhi society because of that, yes? Uh, so they, they were able to uh, connect, yeah. Anyway, Bhante did have connections with the Mahabodhi society and did cooperate with them when they were doing something good. <coughs> but some dispute arose between them and the the, 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 the Tibetan monastery. 
में और जो टिबेट के मठ है उसके बीच में कुछ एक विवाद उत्पन्न हुआ सो बांटे वाज आस्क्ड टू गो मीट डाडर एंड बचे हु बाय दैट टाइम वाज इन कालिमपोंग एंड ट्राई एंड सॉर्ट इट आउट और इसलिए बंते से कहा गया था कि वो जाए और डाडर इन पोचे से मिले जो उस वक्त कालिमपोंग में थे और उस विवाद को सुलझाए एंड ही वेरी क्विकली रियलाइज्ड दैट डाडर इन पोचे कुड नॉट बी टू ब्लेम और उन्हें For Tibetan refugee children. तो तिब्बत से जो शरणार्थी आ रहे थे उनके बच्चों के लिए धातु रिपोचे ने एक पाठशाला खोली। The ITBCI, in Indo-Tibetan Buddhist Cultural Institute. ITBCI. ITBCI. And uh, because the many many refugees were coming out of Tibet uh, because of t- Chinese oppression. तो के वजह से बहुत सारे लोग जो है वो तो और उनके पास कुछ भी नहीं होता। uh, so, uh, uh, was very that their को इस बात की बहुत चिंता रहती थी uh, कि उनके जो संस्कृति है उसका uh, संरक्षण होना चाहिए चाहते थे वो कि उन्हें अच्छी शिक्षा भी और इसलिए उन्होंने कलिंगपोंग में एक पाठशाला शुरू की जो अभी भी चल रही है और करुणा ट्रस्ट भी उस पाठशाला को चलाने में मदद करता है मेनी पीपल और बहुत सारे लोगों ने जाकर पाठशाला को देखा एंड डॉक्टर रिमचेस very very concerned about the children and apparently very very good with them they loved it yeah. and he asked bante to, to to help him with this work so they very 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 close they became yeah and he was very impressed by dr rimpoche's kindness aur dr rimpoche ka jo dayalu swabhav tha usse bhante bahut prabhavit the he knew him very well over a long period of time and never saw him anything but kind aur bahut lambe samay bhante ka unse parichay raha hai aur unhone unhe jab bhi dekha ise roop mein dekha ki wo bahut dayalu hai and uh, he was always mindful वो हमेशा सुखीवान रहते थे और हमेशा मतलब तैयारी रहते थे मतलब ही रहती थी और इस बात and he just uh, about to came to the point where he wanted to take the vote body sat for vow aur phir bante ek samay aise sthan par pahunche jahan par unhe aise laga ki ab unhone modi ko kuchhi pratikya di we've seen what a body sat for really means yeah so humne dekha ki modi sabko ka vastavik kya hota hai somebody who is uh, practicing not just for themselves but for the sake of all so aisa vyakti jo dhamma ka aacharan keval apne hi hit ke liye nahi kar raha hai lekin sabhi ke saath kar raha hai and who's trying to become a, a buddha aur jo buddha banne ke prayas kar raha hai that is a samyak sambuddha aur wo samyak sambuddha banne ke so he wanted to take that vow to bhante us pratigya ko lena cha rahe the and he considered dharmaraka to be a living bodhisattva और वो ऐसा मानते थे कि धातु रिपोर्टे जो है एक जीते जागते पूरी सत्ता और इसीलिए वो उनसे उस प्रतिज्ञा को ग्रहण करना चाहते थे और उन्होंने ऐसा किया उन्नीस सौ बासठ में it clearly had a very big impact on him and he was so stressed that the pratigya ka unke upar bahut gehra asar hua i remember a few years ago bante had a, a, a bout of very serious illness and sleeplessness 
तो मुझे याद है कि कुछ साल पहले बनते बहुत गंभीर रूप से बीमार हुए थे और उस समय वो सो नहीं पाते और उन्होंने मुझे बताया कि उस वक्त वो लगभग He found this life just too painful and, and uh, unattractive. Yeah. He just wanted to go. And uh, he, he, he wanted to have a rest. Yeah. Then I remember he said, hmm. But there is the Bodhisattva vow. And I, I, I suppose, therefore, that I will come back. In a way, he's saying, from my own point of view, I don't want to. But I've taken this vow, and that vow will bring me back. I asked him where he would be reborn. Because I knew otherwise you'd blame me if I didn't ask him. <laughs> and he said, well, you know, on the law of averages, when there are most people, it's either India or China. <laughs> He doesn't know. Yeah. And he, 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 on another occasion, said, don't try to find me. <laughs> I'll sort it out myself. <laughs> You'll only make a mess of it. <laughs> so, uh, um, yes, that Dada Rinpoche. Jamyang Kensi Rinpoche was probably the, 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 the greatest Lama of the 20th century. And uh, uh, Bhante considers him his, his root guru. And uh, he was introduced to him by Kachu Rinpoche. And uh, he, he said the first time he met uh, the Guru, um, he was reading a book. And uh, he, uh, he looked up to the book. And after a little bit of conversation, a polite conversation, he asked Bhante, do you know anything about dance? Uh, uh, Bhante wasn't expecting that from a guru. Yeah. He had to admit he didn't know anything about dance. Anyway, it showed something about this particular guru. Yeah? He was interested in everything. He was reading a book about the origins of Tibetan uh, um, monastic, you could say meditation, dancing. Because for the Tibetans, uh, dance can be a way of meditating. Nirvani's gone, hasn't she? She was interested in dance. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yes, uh, uh, in, in the Tibetan tradition, there are ways of, of, of dancing in meditation. Hmm. Uh, you can see some of these dances on YouTube. Yeah. Very, very impressive. Yeah. And they've clearly got their origins in uh, in Indian dance. Yeah. More the Bharatnatyam style. Yeah. Uh, and uh, very, very beautiful. Mm. Often with masks and uh, costumes, very rich costumes. Yeah. 
Anyway, Jamian Kense Rinpoche was interested. And Bhante said he was just immensely learned. And already, always ready to learn something. Even from some Westerner he didn't know anything about. He, he was interested to see if he could learn something from him. Even though he was supposed to be one of the most learned uh, lamas in Tibet. He always, want, always wanted to learn something new. But Bhante was extremely impressed by uh, how he was. Yeah? Uh, something about him uh, which uh, was completely on another dimension. And he decided to take teachings from him. But, and again, I, 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 I can't tell you so much because time is running out. Yeah. But uh, a remarkable man. And again, very, very kind. Uh, reading through what Bhante says about all his gurus, every one of them, he comments on their kindness. Yeah. They were living Bodhisattvas, they were following the Bodhisattva path. Yeah. And I think Bhante learned from that himself. There's two more, I'll just mention really. On Bhante's right is Dujom Rinpoche. <laughs> Sorry, on, on Jamian Kense's right. <laughs> and again, one of the most important lamas of the 20th century. Bhante's first experience of him was when he was invited with lots of others to the dedication, the Bhumi Puja, for a new Gompa, new uh, Vihara. And he said that uh, uh, what strongly impressed him was Dujam Rinpoche's stillness. <laughs> he was just standing at some point in the ceremony. Hmm. Completely still. He said his figure wasn't a very impressive one, he was quite short and uh, not sort of strongly built, almost a bit feminine, he said. Yeah. And he said he's just standing completely still. And he said it was not merely stillness of the body. It was the stillness of the mind, yeah? Like uh, the, the stillness of the depths of the ocean. Mm. Uh, the, the stillness of a mind that is completely at peace with itself. <laughs> and, and complete still uh, peace with the world. <laughs> and it made a very big impression on him. He later heard something about that Bhumi Puja. You, you can make of it what you like. Anyway, in this Puja, uh, Rinpoche asked all the living beings in that piece of land to go out. Uh, 
And uh, you know, because otherwise they get cut, yeah? And Bhante said that it was reported to him by some of the builders that they hadn't found a single ant in that building work. I don't know. I wasn't there. I can't tell you. Yeah. But that's the sort of reputation he had, yeah? Uh, Bhante then later did have teachings from him. And he said then that the impression was very, very different. Again, very, very kind. But very, very playful. And in fact, during one stage of the teaching, he was wearing a, a, a very, very bright, colourful shirt. With a cowboy hat. <laughs> and the top pocket was full of, of currency notes. <laughs> and, uh, and he said that, uh, you know, had long hair. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Rinpoche would wind it round his head and, and sort of play, yeah? So he said it was a bit like the first time he saw him, it was the, like the depths of the ocean. Uh, but the second time, it was like the, 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 the waves playfully spreading over the surface, yeah? But it was the playfulness of somebody who's just completely free. One more. Dilgo Khensi Rinpoche is the one on the left. The first thing that struck Bhante about him was he was extremely tall. He was six and a half feet tall. So Bhante was uh, seeing him as six, foot, six and a half feet tall. And then his wife came in because he was a married lover. And she was very tall. <laughs> and then his two daughters came in and they were very tall. <laughs> so he said it's like a family of giants. Yeah? <laughs> and again, even though he was a, to a top lama, very, very simple. And he received teachings from him. But he said it was more like a father talking to his son. Yeah? Very gentle, very affectionate. Yeah? Very, very deep. Yeah? But light at the same time. Yeah? And uh, he said that. Uh, when he went to say goodbye to Dilbu Kensi, having got his blessings to go back to England, uh, the Rinpoche said, well, you're going, I must give you something. But he'd only recently come from Tibet, so he had nothing. And they, 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 you know, he lost everything when he left, left Tibet. So he had a conversation with his wife in, in Tibet. And uh, he was clearly saying to her, what have we got that we can give him? Yeah? 
So she looked around, I think they just had one room, yeah. And she came with a, a Tibetan kitchen box. It did have a silver uh, uh, ring around the handle, yeah. <laughs> but an ordinary kitchen knife, yeah. So he gave that to Bante. Yeah? And apologized, but you know that he hadn't got anything else to give him. Yeah? But he said that because it was clear that. Um, it wasn't the value of the gift that mattered, it was the intention which was very strong. And that, that knife was on Bhante's shrine when he died. So he has little snippets of all of these men. There's a, a lovely book by Bhante called Precious Teachers. Mm. Uh, and uh, if you want to know more, you can find out more there. Mm. But there's one more thing I should tell you. After Bhante met uh, Baba Sahib, uh, and especially after Baba Sahib uh, died in 1956, Bhante worked every year, did preaching tours in, uh, amongst uh, the new Buddhists. He spent six months going from town to town, village to village. Often travelling by bullet cart. Or in, uh, you know, a state transport coach. Often no food, yeah. <laughs> Even though people desperately poor would give him their best, yeah. So yes, so until he left India in, in 64, he, he would uh, every year go down to the plains for six months and travel. Uh, <coughs> came to Agra, for instance, yeah. <coughs> and um, uh, he would tell his gurus about this. <coughs> he particularly told uh, Dhan Rinpoche, uh, who very strongly supported him in his work. <laughs> they were really pleased to hear about Baba Sahib. Mm. Uh, and uh, uh, very, very concerned for the future of the, the new Buddhists. Mm. And uh, uh, Bhante came back from one of these tours and went to see Dujum Rinpoche. Rinpoche asked him about the tour and asked him about the new Buddhists. Yeah. And he said, what should I be teaching them? And uh, Rinpoche said, well, there are three levels, yeah? Uh, and uh, so the first thing you should be teaching them is compassion. They should learn compassion for all beings. That's the start of the whole path. Huh? Uh, according to his particular school, that, that's, that's the beginning. That's why we do Metta Bhavna. Yeah. That's why we put such an emphasis on Maitri. 
such an emphasis on, on Sangha, yeah? And such an emphasis on reaching out, yeah? So we should be aware of that, that, that we're not just following Bhante's teachings, yeah? Or, or Baba Sahib's, yeah? But these great Tibetan gurus, yeah? They said the second, he said the second stage was where you visualize Buddhas and Bodhisattvas and get a sort of connection with them. And that's what we started to do these last few days. Yeah? We, we've been uh, creating a connection with all the figures on the tree, yeah? And if you continue doing the prostration practice, that connection will get stronger and stronger. And when you're ordained, not if you're ordained, when you're ordained, uh, then you will be uh, receive a, 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 a sadhana. Hmm. And in that sadhana you will be visualizing the Buddha or the Bodhisattva. And you'll be creating a connection between you and enlightenment. <coughs> the third stage, Dujam Rinpoche said, is a bit further. <coughs> That's where you identify yourself with the figure that you're imagining. Because this whole scheme is so that you gain enlightenment. Mm. So, uh, yes, we're following Dujam Rinpoche's path. Yeah? Uh, We're following Dilga Kense, Jamya Kense's path, yeah? Uh, Rinpoche, yeah. Rinpoche, We're practicing the spirit of the Bodhisattva, Bao. Hmm. Which comes to us from Dada Rinpoche. Hmm. A lot of our meditation is strongly influenced by Mr. Chen. Mm. Uh, and of course, Kashyapji's concern <coughs> with the Pali Canon and the, the <coughs> earliest scriptures, that's that's part of our, our way. Mm. And of course, we're strongly influenced by Baba Sahib's concern with the Dhamma as transformative of society. Uh, Anagarika Dhammapala fought for Bodhgaya to be a Buddhist place. Mm. Like many of the figures he fought against many, many difficulties. <coughs> but he's a strong champion of the Buddha Dhamma. Mm. And that spirit also is with us. <coughs> so uh, in looking at these figures, uh, even though I haven't been able to tell you so much, I'm telling you your own ancestry. Mm. <coughs> Yeah, Bhante is, if you like, our guru in the present. Hmm? 
Through little assistant gurus like me and Shraddhavadri and Maji Jeet and so on. Choti gurus. Choti gurus. But behind Bhante are these, these uh, uh, ten great figures. Yeah? And of course behind them are all these figures uh, above. Yeah? With the Buddha, the Buddha Shakyamuni uh, at, the, at the top of them all. So I know this has been a bit of lengthy exposition. But I wanted to show you, you know, like your parents do something like a, a photo album of your, <laughs> of your family. <laughs> Uh, and uh, well, like your parents have created your body and you know created you as a human being. These are your ancestors who are creating you as a as a spiritual being. Yeah. So you can see why you're bowing down to them. Uh, we're exceptionally fortunate that Bhante happened to be in a place at a time when these great, great figures were accessible. And much later, you, you could just see Dujum Rinpoche way in the distance, yeah? You wouldn't be able to sit and have a cup of tea with him and uh, learn from him in that way. Yeah? <coughs> so Bhante was in the right place at the right time. And we are in the right place at the right time. <laughs> when we can receive that spiritual influence. Yeah? But it's not enough just to receive. If you just receive, you kill it. Hmm. You need to share it. Hmm. So we'll stop there now. So, अभी-अभी यहाँ पे